Hey, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a seamless photo from two separate photos using generative fill and sky replacement. For your convenience, I provided these two photos as examples and then you can apply the same methods to your own photos. Let's expand this photo to the right and then we'll place the other one into it. To do this, we'll go to Image canvas size. We'll click this arrow which means we're going to place the new photo to the right of it. And if you're in pixels, let's make the width twice the size of the height. So in this case, since the height is 1440 pixels, we'll make the width 2880 pixels. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Open the other photo. Make sure the Move tool is open, if not press V on your keyboard and drag it onto the tab of the first photo. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. If you want to adjust its size, open the Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to any corner and drag it out or in. In this particular case, I'll cancel it because I like the size to begin with. Move it to a position where you'd like it to be relative to the other photo. Open your rectangular marquee tool and make sure the Add To icon is active. This will add selections as we make them. Drag the tool over the first photo, leaving a little room around its inside perimeter. Now we'll drag our tool over the other photo and again make sure there's some of the photo outside the perimeter of the selection. Invert the selection by clicking the Invert Selection icon on the contextual taskbar. Click Generative Fill and click Generate or press Enter or Return. And as always, we'll get three options to choose from. All right, so this is one, here's two, or we can click these arrows right here. Here's three. I think I like the second one. Look how beautifully Generative Fill filled in the sky and merged the landscape together. Now for the sky, I still find the sky replacement filter better than using Generative Fill for a few reasons. Number one, we know exactly what kind of sky we're going to get because it shows us beforehand. Number two, it won't change the topography of the landscape, and that's like a major thing. I did an in-depth tutorial on sky replacement, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided that link in the video's description. First, we'll convert our visible image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, shift-click the background to make all the layers active, and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Edit and Sky Replacement. It replaces our existing sky with one of the many skies inside the filter. If you want to add your own sky, click the arrow next to the preview window, click the gear icon, click Get More Skies, Import Images, and if you have a sky you want to export, navigate to it and click Open. Now we can do a number of things right now. We can shift the edge. We can fade the edge. In this particular case, I'm going to fade it out all the way. I like the richness of the sunset down here. We can make it bluer or yellower. I'm just going to keep it at its default of zero. And the scale, of course, changes the size of it. And I'm going to keep it at 100%. We can also flip it but I like it the way it is. So now we click OK. And there you have it. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.